Hey, what's up everyone? Julian here back with another web development video. And today I'm gonna to be talking about lazy loading and we're gonna be building a lazy loader using the JavaScript Intersection Observer API. So the best way I can describe a lazy loader is imagine you've got loads of content that you need to render out to HTML. So, you know, you've got loads of blog posts or articles, or you've got a huge list of a million rows in a table that you need to display in your HTML. Well, you don't really want to go ahead and just dump everything out all in one go because that's too much content. It's going to slow your page down. It's going to make things unresponsive. You might not want to use pagination either. You know, you just want things to just keep on coming. Well, the beauty of a lazy loader is that you can set an amount. So let's say, let's say blog posts, for example, you get to the bottom of 20 posts and then automatically it pulls in another 20 and loads them. And then you keep scrolling another 20 and keep scrolling and etc. until you run out. So that's what we're going to be building today. So let's take a look at the example that we've got here. It's just a single page, nice and simple. And if I go ahead and reload, you can see if we keep scrolling, we can just keep on going forever and ever. And it's just loading content. And once we've got to the end of our content, we just get no more posts here. So this is what we're going to be building and you can see as we uh, as we load we get this uh, this counter changing up in the nav and you can't see it now but we do have a spinner down at the bottom so i'll go ahead and i'm just going to throw in a bit of delay there so you guys can see it don't worry we're going to come back to the web server shortly but you can see now we get this spinner at the bottom here and also if you look over in the terminal you can see we've got a message saying returning posts, you know, 190 to 200, etc. So this is what we're going to be building. So let's go ahead and jump in first to the web server. So we are using Python and Flask, but of course you can use any kind of web server or programming language of your choice. So we haven't got much code here to cover, so let's quickly go through it. We've got two strings here just with heading and content with some random lorem ipsum. We've got a list which is acting as our database. We got this posts variable, which we can change to depending on how many posts that we want to create. So, you know, I can go and change that to 500. That's going to generate 500 posts for us. We've got this quantity variable, and this is the variable that's going to control how many posts we send back to the client. So you can see when we were scrolling through this, it was loading 10 at a time, and that's based on this variable here. We're then doing a 4x in range of however many posts we want to generate. We're just shuffling some of those strings and then creating a new entry in our database with the index, with a heading and with some content. And if we just take a quick look, we've got the index, we've got some, we've got the heading and we've got some content here. So we've then got a root, which is just returning the actual template itself, which we've got here. We'll go through that in a sec. And we've got a root in our application. The way this route works is that our client is making a get request to this slash load, providing a query string, which we're then storing as a variable called counter. And by default, the uh, counter variable is set to zero in the client side, and you'll see that in a sec. So if the counter is equal to zero, which it will be by default as the page loads, what we're going to do is just return a slice of our database from zero up to the quantity of items that we want to send back. So in this case, when the page loads, it's going to send back the first item up to the 10th item. And we're sending that back as JSON. Um, the next if, well, inside this if block, we've then got an elif statement with if the counter is equal to the amount of posts that we've got in our database, We've, we've run out of posts, we've exhausted all of our posts. So we're just gonna send back an empty JSON object and that's gonna stop the requests happening. However, if the counter is more than zero and you know we've, we've still got more content to show, then what we're going to do is send back whatever the value is for the counter plus the counter, well, we're gonna take a slice from the counter up to the counter plus the uh, quantity of posts that we want to send back. So this means that we're just rendering out certain slices of our database that the client needs to see. 
So that's everything we're doing here in the root and that's everything for our web server. So let's head back to our HTML. So I'll go ahead and make this bigger. So we are using Bootstrap just to make things quicker, but again, obviously you don't have to, but if you do want to follow along, we're using the Bootstrap CDN link. And if you head to getbootstrap.com, head to get started, scroll down to start a template, just go ahead and copy this. And then all we're going to be doing is changing everything inside of the, um, the body tags here. So let's take a look. We're also using a CSS library as well, just to make things look a bit more interesting. We're using animate.css. I'll throw a link in the description. I'll also throw a link in the description to this code as well. So you can go ahead and work through that in your own time and check it out. So let's jump into the HTML. So the first thing we've got here is a nav tag. And inside the nav, we've got just an anchor here with the ID of loaded and zero items loaded as the text. And we've also set the sticky top class on the nav. So it sticks to the top and we can keep a track of things as we load them. And that's the anchor there. Next up, we've got a we've got our main tag here. Excuse me. And inside our main tag, we've got a container, a row and a column an H1 heading of infinite load. And then we've got a div with an ID of scroller. And this is gonna be the div that's gonna hold all of our posts. So if we take a quick look, these are our posts and you can see we've got these as cards and we've got this uh, scroller wrapper which is surrounding that. Now this is uh, this was quite interesting to me because I've never used the HTML template tag before. So we're using it here to kind of create a schema of a template that we want to reuse over and over again. So we've got a template with an ID of post template and inside our template is the actual content. And we've just got a card with the class of animated and fade in, which are part of the uh, animate.css classes and also just a bit of shadow on there. Now inside the card itself, we've got a card body div, and then inside the card body, we've got an H4 with the ID of title, and we've got a span with the ID of content. Now the way that HTML templates work from the limited amount of use that I've had with them is, like I said, it lets us create this schema that um, anything inside the template tags isn't going to get rendered out to the DOM. Um, it can only be rendered with JavaScript. So I thought I'd try this template tag with because we are using JavaScript and you can see down here we don't have a great deal. So we'll get to that shortly. So we can only render these template tags using JavaScript. So it's quite an interesting way to kind of lay out a schema and then reuse it over and over again. And we're going to be querying. So we're going to be creating clones of the template and then querying each template for these IDs and dynamically updating their content, which is uh, which we'll, we'll show you working in just a sec. Now, the last thing we've got is our um, another div here with the ID of Sentinel. So let's just see where this is. So you can see it's just below our scroller div. And what this div is going to do, well, first of all, it's got the spinner inside that you've seen. But more importantly, what this uh, Sentinel div element is going to do is act as the trigger. So when uh, when this div comes into view, it's going to trigger the function, which is going to pull in that data. So it's going to pull in, you know, a batch of new posts, and then we'll have another function, which then renders that out to the DOM. So that is everything for our HTML. So let's jump down to our JavaScript. So the first thing we're doing is creating a couple of variables up here. And the ones I've got highlighted are just references to elements in our DOM. So we've got the scroller, we've got the template itself, we've got this uh, loaded element here, which is up in the nav at the top. And we've got our center, which I've just been explaining, which is this div here. We then create a new variable called counter and set it to zero. And we've then got this function here called load item. So let's go through this function first. So the first thing we're going to do is make a request using the fetch API. 
and we're going to make that request to slash load and then provide this query string here. And we've just got this uh, query string parameter called C with the value of whatever the counter is. So by default, it's going to start at zero. We're then going to take that response and we're going to pass it into a JSON object. As I've explained, we are returning a JSON string from our uh, Flask application here. So then we've got another callback, which we're just passing in the, uh, the JSON object that we've passed, and then we're gonna do something with it. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at that object, and if the if not data.length, so if we've got no data, we're just going to update the inner contents of the sentinel, which remember is going to be at the bottom of all of our posts, and just with a string saying no more posts. So when we run out, when we've used up all of our posts, when we've got no more content to show, we're just going to show no more posts down at the bottom of the page. However, if we do have content, well, we're going to iterate through it with just a for loop here. Now, the first thing we're going to do is create a clone of our template. And there's a couple of ways of doing that, which I'm aware of that I've been experimenting with. So you've got a template dot content and dot content is a reference to the content of the template, this inner section here. And then what we're doing is calling the dot clone node method on it and passing it true. And we're storing that as a variable called template clone. And then another way of doing it is with document dot import node and then passing that template dot content and true. So two ways of doing this, there's probably more, but these are just the ways that I've been experimenting with. Now, the second thing we're doing is we are querying the template clone for the title and content element. And then we're going to set the inner HTML of those elements as, um, well, we're using some backticks here because we are using some string interpolation. And then we're going to reference the first, um, well, the data object that's currently in this loop. And we're going to get the zeroth element, the first element, and the second element here. And we're setting uh, the title to zero and one, which if we go ahead and take a quick look, you can see here we've got the zeroth element and we've got the first element. So that's the index and the heading, and then the second element, which is the content or the third element, but the, uh, you know, number two in the index. So then after that, we are then appending our cloned template to the scroller div, which you remember is up here. We're appending our cloned template to that using dot append child. We're then updating, incrementing the counter, and then we're going to set the inner text of our loaded element, which if you remember, is just that um, anchor up in the sticky nav here with the counter and items loaded. So that's going to give us some visual feedback of how many um, items we've currently loaded into the DOM. Now, the next thing we are going to do is create this new variable here called the uh, intersection observer. And that's going to be a new instance of the intersection observer. And then what we're doing in here is um, if the sentinel is out of view, we're just going to return nothing. We don't want to load any new content if the sentinel uh, div, which I know I've said it before, but it's the um, item or the element that we're using to trigger the request. So if that's out of view, then we're just going to return and not do anything. However, when the, um, when the Sentinel element comes into view, we're going to go ahead and call our load items function, which is going to go ahead, pull in that data and append our cloned templates to the DOM. And then finally, to actually uh, activate this, we're calling the dot observe method on our new uh, intersection observer instance. And then we pass it the element that we want it to observe. And again, that is just our sentinel element there so put that all together and let me uh, make this a little smaller so we can see what's going on in the terminal so that's everything for the html and javascript and if we jump back in we can see we are lazy loading using the intersection observer 
So quite a simple solution, but it gets the job done. And it's just what I've been experimenting with. So I'd definitely love to hear down in the comments below if you guys have got uh, any examples of this. You know, send me a link or something or just let me know um, any different ways of doing this. Again, it's just something that I've been playing around with today and I thought it was quite cool and this is the way that I uh, I was testing with it. So I think it's quite interesting. So another cool thing, while we're on these uh, Animate CSS, you know, there's so many different options here. And of course, you don't have to use these, but, you know, for example, if we were to, in fact, I think we can have a look at some examples here. So, you know, for the lulls, let's go ahead and change it to shake and see how it looks. Let's check this out. <laughs> okay. That's going to make you a bit ill, isn't it? Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that there are plenty of different uh, animations that you can use. What's ta-da? That's uh, just going to be a bit crazy, isn't it? Well, I think these fade ones are quite nice. So fade right, maybe that might look quite good. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. Oh, did I um oh it's fade in right. Try that again. So again, it's just another way of visualizing what's going on here. You can see those uh those blog posts are flying in and being updated and we've got this little CSS animation like so. So that pretty much wraps it up for this one. Maybe one last thing I could show you is if we were to change this quantity, you know, we can change that to 20 if we wanted to load in more content. And if we go ahead and refresh, we're now loading 20 items at a time and you can see it's being updated there. So quite flexible here with what you want to do. So again, that wraps things up. For this one, I'm going to stop rambling now because I am rambling on. I hope you guys enjoyed and would love to hear your comments down in the comment section below. Again, I will throw links to uh, Animate CSS and also a link to the website where you can see all of the source code for this. So, I hope you guys enjoyed and feel free to drop a like or subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And as always, I will see you on the next one.